Hi, it's Dwayne. This is our follow-up video for the Corsair HyperX water cooling series. So during the last video, we showed you everything we got inside that great big box and then some. But this video, we're going to show you some of the results from the testing. We're going to actually put this water block on top of this video card. So I've already done testing for the water cooling blocks for the CPU. I haven't done any water cooling block testing for the GPU yet because well, you can kind of see, it's, it's still has not put together. I have done the air cool testing, so I ran it at normal speeds and I did some overclocking with that and I gathered up all that data. So I'll show you that along with the water cooling data once we get this on top of this. I'm hoping it's not going to be too bad. So I'll be using my open air test bench. Easier for me to use that by using soft tubing. And like I said, it's really easy for me to switch out a lot of products that way. What I've also done though is I've used the 240 radiator and the 360 radiator. So I'm testing both of those as well. So that's why we're going to be using the compression fittings or the soft tube fittings for this GPU block. So I think what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and start tearing this apart so that we can get this onto this, so we can get onto the test bench, so I can show the results here. All right, let's dive into this. Let's see how, uh, how bad I can mess this up. gone ahead and already cleaned the die for the GPU and we're about ready to uh, start assembling this stuff so I'm going to start taking everything out of the box. We're going to check it out and then we're going to start putting it on top of here and hopefully everything's going to go okay. Okay, so the manual shows that these cables, which are for the LEDs, are going to be riding out the back. So we got to make sure that we can find the best possible solution to make sure that they go out that way. And it looks like, I think, probably towards the top. Because see, you got these caps that are going to be down in the bottom area. So I think if we have them come out towards this way, they're going to kind of go around this area of where the caps are at. Go like so. Fits under nice. Then what happens is you take, see how that, see, see, I was right. Comes right out through here. See where that little notch is at? That's right where the cables are supposed to come out from. Take our new back plate. See which way it's supposed to go. Of course I had it backwards goes just like that and then what we do is we take all of our screws that we have and we go ahead and screw it through the back plate into the heat sink itself. So there we go. We have now got a brand new back plate and a brand new cooler for our 1080 Ti. I'm pretty curious to see how it's going to work. And don't forget, it's got this nice little indicator showing you that the water's flowing through. And you'll be able to see a lot of the water actually inside there itself. And you've got your pass-throughs. Remember that 
what you want to do when you're hooking this up is I am probably going to be using these here because of my test bench. I can have an easy way of going in and out. More than likely what I'm going to be doing is having I think one on one side and then maybe one on the other side. It all depends on the hose configuration. So you can kind of see how that is. Then what you want to do is you make sure that you block off the opposite side. That way the water doesn't come spraying out. <laughs> Right, so now you've got it where you've got the in one side and then it's going to come out the other side. So it's in and turn around and then it's gonna go through. So all in all, it looks pretty damn good. I like it and I really, really can't wait to see what it's gonna look like inside. I'm gonna go ahead and put the end plate on and then throw it in the system and start getting us some testing results. Let's go ahead and see how the XC7 did. Now the ambient temperature of the room was around 26, 26.5 Celsius. That's about 77, 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, yeah, I'm in Arizona, so it's a little warmer in the summertime, but to me, that's better testing actually. So when the ambient temperature is a little higher to see how much it can actually cool it down. Let's take a look and see how the XG7 did. good right so the same ambient temperature as when we tested the CPU water block so pretty satisfied with that uh, overall I think it's a really good setup really good first try I think they've done a lot of examination I think they've done a lot of thinking about it a lot of design I think it's really good for a very first time for a company to do this of course they did gather some stuff from middle companies but you know what who wouldn't you can't do everything in-house but you can always try and get the best what you can from outside and put it all together Overall, I thought it was really good and a great job. Well, we hope you liked the video. Please hit the subscribe button. Also click on the like button. Got something to talk about. Whatever I messed up in, in the video, please put it down in the comments. I'm sure somebody else will find something else to comment about as well. Thanks for watching the video. Please hit the subscribe button and also click on that like button. The more we get to those, the better the videos we can get out to you guys. The higher we rank, the higher I get more popular. <laughs>